Hello fellow nostalgic beasts. Alec here again. I wanted today to give you a tour on my prized possession, my fifth limb, my extra extremity, my phone. I love my phone. I have an iPhone 7. I know a lot of people say that Androids can do so much more than iPhones, and I'm sure they probably can, but I'm very comfy with my iPhone and I'm very familiar with it, so that's what I have and that's what I like having. I mostly live on the internet, so I'm very appreciative to this little black box that helps me stay oh so connected to it wherever it is that I may wander. Also, because I film on my phone, I wouldn't be able to make YouTube videos without it. So I love my phone. End of story. But yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun to show anybody that might be curious or interested in seeing how I have my um, phone organized and the apps that I have downloaded. So hopefully this is not that boring. So here's my lock screen with my favorite all-time low lyrics. Love them. So you probably can't tell, but I try to arrange my most frequently used apps by colors vertically. So the furthest to the left are all blue for the most part, and then red, and then yellow, and then it all slowly dies because I'm horrible at commitment. As you can see, one thing I have done and have always done is arrange my apps into category boxes. This is actually so that way I only ever need to be on the first page and don't have to do any excessive, unnecessary swiping. Everything's on the first page. Such a lazy life I live. And then I use all the useless apps that I never use and don't care about in one pathetic app category box on the second page of my phone. So this has two functions. The first function is so that way I never have to see them. The second function is so that way, because all of these apps are consolidated and put on the second page, I now have the ability to freely swipe back and forth to the other page so I can see my home screen picture, not all blocked. Cause that always makes me really sad. Like being able to see the home screen picture, but then it also not being able to be seen because of all the apps that are in its way. So I came up with a little plot to be able to see it whenever I want to see it without feeling like, oh great, now I want to see that, but I can't see that. You just swipe because now the only thing blocking it is one box of useless apps that I never use. So most of these useless apps that I keep in the pathetic category box on the second page um, are apps that I either have more direct access to by swiping up on the little widget section, um, apps that I never got around to uninstalling or just never really cared about. My lazy self does enjoy the widgets instead of going into settings. I mostly use the flashlight and the brightness features, but I like to keep my brightness mostly up all the way all the time because I can't see the phone unless it's all the way up. Side note, I hate when people try and show me something and their brightness is not all the way up because how do you see that? I don't know if maybe I have something wrong with my eyes, but I personally cannot see the phone when it's not bright. I mean, if you're going to the movies or you are going to bed soon and your eyes are tired from the day, I get it. But if you're not, then why not have it up? Like really harsh and stuff on your eyes, it drains your battery usage. I don't care. I can't see. So anyways, there's the mail app. I have my old, more embarrassing email also connected to this. TacoBellGolden at AIM.com. Directly below this in my blue line is the school app for emailing. And that is the worst app because it makes me sad because it is very responsible and always makes me do things. Then I have my calendar. So currently, since I'm not in school, my calendar is actually basically not a thing that I use at all. But when I am in school, it is very packed with my course load, my schedule. I even put assignments in there sometimes and I use it very religiously. It's a very handy tool. And if you don't use it, I don't know how you survive. When I work, I also put that in there. So if I didn't have my calendar, I probably would have never shown up to work ever. Then of course I have a couple hundred pictures of some vegan yums 
more flattering pictures of myself before my hair started falling out, and then also some memes, because I am trash. The next significant thing on my phone are the YouTube apps, which are currently not working. Makes me really sad because now I can't binge watch Jesse Page being an adorable bean and I can't respond to any of you guys quite as quickly, which I'm really sorry about fam. I don't know what's going on with that. We're gonna look into it. I also have this category of apps that I like to think of as my own personal debt log of the money that I do not have. In there, there's my bank account and a couple apps that I either use to make, keep track of, or save some money. For example, if you've ever heard of Instacart, that is something I do now. I am an Instacart shopper, so if you ever need an emo kid to deliver your groceries for you, I am your guy. So that app is in there. I also am participating in a Facebook research study. That's why I have the VPN on the top of my screen. I keep that app in there too. So boring stuff. But as a adult, I need to attempt to care. I also have Canvas, which reminds me of school and makes me gag. Ooh, Snapchat's a thing. Snap me some chats. Then I have this productivity category, which is kind of lame and partially inaccurate. For example, I have Urban Dictionary in there. And let's be totally honest, that is not productive. That is for my own enjoyment and procrastination. There are some also other apps in there that keep me organized and I try and do like regular people things and like stuff like that. Nothing really too cool or anything like significant to me. Then I have an entire category for my photo, video, and text editing stuff. I have quite a few apps in here that I actually probably need to delete because they're duplicates and do the same things as other apps that I already have, but I am need to get around to deleting them still. This trash app I am all set with. It doesn't do anything good and I'm just all done. Delete. Facetune I use a lot for editing my selfies and my photos, especially blurring backgrounds out and things like that, minor fixes. Photoshop I like for color distorting and filters, and then I like to use Photogrid for my thumbnails and also mood boards and creating backgrounds on photos in the Instagram fit. Vaunt I use to add text on some of my videos that I make, and then I like to use Video Leap for mild video editing. It's probably the best free video editing app that the App Store has that actually has a decent amount of effects and stuff, but I currently use a editing software on my laptop. It's just so much better but that one actually isn't bad for a free app. Plutoverse, I've made some neat photo loops that I've used for some of my end screens, and then I also post them on my Instagram. Then I have a social media app category for the apps that I don't use quite as heavily as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and stuff like that, but that I still use occasionally or very rarely. I have all the links to my social media profiles in the description, so definitely go ahead and check that out if you wanna connect to me elsewhere. I'm mostly Alec is Nostalgic or Alec Connell places. I like Pinterest, you now and Twitter, but I don't reach many people on those apps. So I kind of like don't really use them that much. Live Me is another live streaming app that I've actually enjoyed getting to go on. Recently, I've been going on every single night and sometimes up to 2000 people come and say really nice things. So I actually really like that app. And if you are curious about downloading it, please go ahead and chat with me. I would love to chat with you. I have these dating apps mostly out of curiosity, but I also go on there when I'm bored sometimes and it's very entertaining what some people kind of say. Or if I'm out in public and I'm like, I wonder who's around me that's also gay. Am I the only gay one? I rarely ever check them. And then I have my notepad. My notepad is an interesting place, let me tell you. In my notepad, I have a couple notes of Instagram hashtags, I have grocery lists, I have names of songs that I don't wanna forget, I have dreams that I wake up and don't wanna forget, so I write them all out. This one I called Big Family Animation because I dreamed and it was a big family and it was in an animated format. I dreamed like a horror Pixar animation in my head overnight and I wrote it down, a couple paragraphs of a synopsis and it was a pretty interesting dream. I have a couple interesting ones, so I, I tend to write them down on my notepad. Next, I have the spending app category, which I'm honestly in no place to be using. I have a couple movie apps and a few different places to eat, 
And then I also have Lush because it's the most aesthetically pleasing app I have ever seen in my entire life. Also, you can shop by feeling and that gets me every time. I also have a category of entertainment apps. I don't use most of them, to be honest. I was an intense Pokemon Go user when it first came out. Intense. But I only recently just started getting back into using it every now and again when I go outside, which is mostly never. I've been liking it. But occasionally, if it happens for at least a little bit, this. I also downloaded this app called I Love Hue, which is also a very aesthetically pleasing app. You like do a puzzle to arrange the colors in a very like, suave way and it's very relaxing but also very stressful so don't let your guard down but yeah i just don't really play many games but i do have some downloaded on here i also have a couple books on here that i have downloaded into the kindle and stuff like that lastly i have all my music on here i have a student apple music subscription so i am free to download as many disney emo, and early 2000s music as I wish. And that's my phone. Thanks for watching my whole video. Do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you would like to show some support. No pressure, but please. And lastly, don't forget to stay nostalgic. Let's go back, back to the beginning.